into you and strength into you and breath into you. In Jesus' name, amen. The title of my message today is Supersize. When God asks you to do something, when God asks you to do something, sometimes we feel inadequate to do it. But God would not have asked you to do it if he didn't think that you could do it. So many times when God asks us, you know, go and make disciples, go and teach, go and preach, go out into the community. Sometimes we say, God, well, I, don't, I don't think we're capable. I don't think I've got what it takes. I'm not capable of this. But he would not have asked you if he didn't think that you could do it. Matthew 14, as evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away. Now Jesus, so stop right there. Jesus has been teaching these people for quite a while. And we'll notice, uh, we'll notice at the end of the story, it said there was at least 5,000 men. Well, I'm just going to be honest with you. Because of what I've seen in my lifetime, Whenever there's a meeting in church, revival, conference, there's always more women than men. Am I telling the truth? Because women are more spiritual, right? Amen. I, I sh Y'all should have all said something. Okay. <laughs> I got one woman said, yeah. I was like, come on, y'all. But it's the truth. Because there's a sensitivity in women to the Spirit of God more so than men, because men think they've got it together. Got it together. So in this story, when there's 5,000 men, it just, because it just counted the men, let me tell you something, there's a whole lot more women and children, because women and children come to things more than men. Am I telling you the truth? So if it says there's 5,000 men, there's probably 25, 30,000 people here. I'm just being, I'm just using the numbers of what I see in today's society, Okay. Because men think they've got it together, they don't need whatever. So when it says 5,000 men, there was tens of thousands of people on this hillside. And I've been to that hillside on the Sea of Galilee. And I remember sitting there and talking about the story. And I looked at that hillside. I'm sitting in the grass. I'm looking at that hillside. And I was like, you could have put tens of thousands of people on that hillside. It went on forever. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm sitting where this happened. And it was a really special place. It says, this is a remote place. The disciples came to him and said, uh, Lord, you've been speaking for a long time. This is a remote place. It's already getting late. Send the crowds away so they can go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they don't need to go away. You feed them. Isn't that what he said? Yeah. You give them something to eat. We have here only five loaves a bread and two fish, they answered. Jesus said, don't send them away. You feed them. Wait a minute, Jesus. There are thousands of people here. How am I supposed to do this? We don't have enough. See, Jesus won't ask, won't ask that question if you don't think you can do it. We don't have enough. We only have five loaves and two fish. The problem is we are just like the disciples. We don't think we have enough. When he tells us to do something, we say, Lord, we don't have enough. Jesus is speaking in Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Not when you have enough. What does it say? Give. Not give when you have enough. Give. Give what you have. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. See, when the measure is all that I have, he measures out all that he has. When you give, a, when you give your all, no matter what size it is, he gives his all. So when you give of the resources you have, he gives out of the resources he has in his storehouse. That's right. That's right. 
He supersizes whatever you have. That was the title of my message. He supersizes whatever you have. You just have to step out in faith and give what you have. Yes. Supersize, if you put that definition, supersize to sizably increase the amount or extent of something. This word was made, I guess you could say famous, back in 1987, the summer of 1987, by a place called McDonald's. Anybody back in 1987? In other words, you buy a meal, and they would ask, do you want to supersize it? Which means, do you want everything in it to be bigger? Yes, please. Give me the big, the big the drink, the big fry, the big whatever, the Big Mac, big everything, right? And so many others have come along size, you know, Burger King came up and they called it king size, and then we've had others, you know, you want to upgrade it. But today I'm going to use the word supersize. Supersize. As evening approached, we're going to read the story again. The disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place and it is already getting late. Send the crowds away so they go to the villages and buy themselves some food. Jesus replied, they do not need to go away. You feed them. We have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. And what does Jesus say? Bring them here to me. He never says of the five loaves and two fishes, that's not enough. What does he say? Bring them to me. Give me what you have. That's what he says to them. Give me what you have. Verse 19, as he directed the people to sit down on the grass, he set them down in groups of 50. Groups of 50 so he could go from each group to each group and feed them. And taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples and the disciples gave them to the people. They all ate and were satisfied. Now, how many were there? Tens of thousands of people. And they were all, not just a morsel, not just a bite. It says they all, eat, all ate and were satisfied. They were full. And the disciples picked up 12 basketfuls of broken pieces that were left over. Where did all these baskets come from? Well, when people would journey, they would carry things with them. You know, sometimes we use our backpacks. A lot of us use backpacks when we go on journeys or things. So they would have had baskets there. So they had 12 baskets that we, they used here for the leftovers of what God did, of what Jesus did. The number of those who ate was about 5,000 men. Besides, we know more women and children. So 20, 25, 30, who knows? See, he supersizes whatever you have. You just have to step out in faith and give what you have. For with the measure that you give, it will be measured to you. <clears throat> this is a thimble. Anybody use one of these? For those that sew, this is a thimble. I thought about getting something smaller, but I didn't think you would ever be able to see it up here. This is a thimble. This is a small container. Thank you. While I got it open. So they're in a remote place. And they say to Jesus, Jesus send these people away so they can find some food in the villages. And Jesus said, don't send them away. You feed them. And they say, we only have five loaves and two fish. And he says, what does he say? Bring it to me. See, so many times in our life, 
This is all we have. And we don't think it's enough. But when I take it, whatever it is, and I put it into God's economy, it didn't look like much. But when I take it and I pour it into God's economy and I pour it into God's provision, he supersizes it. This is, he said, just give. He said, just bring it. He didn't say when it's enough. He just said, bring me what you have. Give what you have. And so when I take it to him and I put it in his economy, he takes it and he supersizes. Until not only, but it's everything that's necessary and it's 12 baskets over, and everybody's been satisfied when I bring what I have. Mark 9, verse 17. Another story I want to tell you. A man in the crowd answered, Chief Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit who has robbed him of his speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground he foams at the mouth, gnashes with his teeth, becomes rigid. Sounds like a seizure to me, right? I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Jesus turns to them and says, you unbelieving generation. How long shall I stay with you? This is a very harsh rebuke to his disciples. How long shall I, shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into, the, into a convulsion. And he fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? Now I want you to picture this. Nothing rattles Jesus. Nothing ever catches Jesus by surprise. <coughs> Excuse me. He just told them to bring the boy to him. And the boy, on his way to see Jesus, the demon sees Jesus and throws him to the ground into this epileptic seizure, this convulsion. And he's writhing on the ground. He's foaming at the mouth. And all this is going on right now. As Jesus is not rattled by it, and this is going around, this is going on at Jesus' feet. He looks at the father and says, how long has he been like this? And the father says, from childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him to the fire or water to kill him. But if you can, if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, if you can. Everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Jesus is saying, what do you mean if I can? Everything is possible if you believe. Jesus is asking the boy's father, what do you have? The father is saying, I have a little belief. Can you help me get more Jesus? What did the father say? I have a little belief. Help my unbelief. I don't think I have enough. Can you help me get more Jesus? I'm giving you all I have. Can you supersize what I have? Verse 24, immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my own belief. I do believe, but I don't know if it's enough. And so many times in our lives we're the same way. We know we need to believe something, have faith for something, and we look in our cubby and we look in our, on our shelf and this is all we find. And we say, Lord, this is all I've got. Can you supersize it? Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. In other words, Jesus, this is all I have. Can you, can you help me? Can you give me more? 
Can you supersize what I have? I'm going to give you what I have. That's all I have. Verse 25, when Jesus saw the crowd running to the scene, he rebuked the impure, impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently, and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. Give what you have. Luke 17, verse 5. The apostles said to the Lord, what did, he, what did they say to him? Increase our faith. Lord, this is all we've got. Increase our faith. Did Jesus give them a bigger container? No, because whatever you have, he's going to supersize it. He's not going, he didn't say, go, go, get, go, go figure it out for yourself, go get a bigger container. He says... If you have faith as, a small, faith as small as a mustard seed. Now, if I had a mustard seed up here in my finger, you would not, finger, between my fingers, you would not be able to see it. So I didn't even use a mustard seed. But a thimble is something you can see. But you know it's very small. He says, if you have faith, they asked him, Lord, increase our faith. This is all we've got. He says, if you have this kind of faith, as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will, be, it will obey you. Give what you have, and he will supersize it. Give what you have. Give what you have. Not when you have enough. Give what you have. Acts 3, verse 1. Another story I want to bring you. One day, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at three in the afternoon. Now, a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful. Now, let's back up. How long has he been lame? Since his birth. This is a man probably in his 30s. Where he, put, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Peter looked straight at him, and as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. And he's about to get something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Peter took what he had. And he knew that when he poured it into Jesus' economy, into God's economy, into God's provision, he knew when he, takes, when he would take it and pour it into the God's economy, it would supersize it and be whatever he needed. So at that moment, he says, what I have what does he say? I don't have any so, uh, gold. I don't have any silver. But what I have, I pour into God's economy in the name of Jesus. He just supersized it. Rise up and walk. Look at the rest of this story. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up, and instantly the man's feet and ankles were strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with him into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the same man who used to, who used to sit begging at the temple gate called Beautiful. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Acts 3, verse 11. While the man held on to Peter and John, why was he holding on to them? He's just been healed, right? But he has been lame since birth. He has never used his legs. So muscles that you never use, what happens to them? They atrophy, right? They're never used. They atrophy. You don't, there's nothing there. So even though he was strengthened enough to get up and walk with them in the run, he gets to the point where these muscles that have never been used 
are starting to gain their strength. So he's holding on to these two men. Why? While God is continuing in his life. It says he held on to them. <coughs> While the man held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at me? Why do you stare at us? As if by my own power or godliness, we made this man walk. God did this. What is Peter saying? I took what I had. I poured it into God's economy. And this man is standing because God supersized it. Peter said, I give you gold and silver I do not have, but what I give you, what I pour into God's economy is what I give you. I have this much, but when I give it to him, he supersizes it. Why do you stare at us as if by our own power, God, on this, we made this man walk? God did this, Peter said. Acts 3, verse 13 the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though Pilate had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him, on the day, on, raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus... This man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Peter is saying, I gave what I had, and God supersized it. Moses the story of Moses. Moses, what do you have? God is speaking to Moses on the mountain. In Exodus 3, 16, God has called Moses over to speak to him in a burning bush on Mount Sinai. And he says, go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery, out of your misery in Egypt, into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Parasites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness and offer, to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. And after that, he will let you go. Exodus 4, verse 1. Moses answered, What if they do not believe me? Or listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you. What was Moses saying to God? This is all I got. That's what Moses was saying. This is, I don't think I have enough to do this. You're asking me to go to the land that I was kicked out of, I was banished from, to bring freedom to millions of people? I don't know if I have enough, Lord. But that's the thing with God. He will not ask you if he didn't think you could do it. Moses answered, what if they do not believe me or listen to me and say the Lord did not appear to you? Then the Lord said to him, what's in your hand? What's in your hand? He says, a staff. He replied, the Lord said, throw it on the ground. What do you have? Throw it on the ground. Moses threw it on the ground and it became a snake and he ran from it. Then the Lord said to him, reach out your hand 
and take it by the tail, which we know if you've ever dealt with snakes, you don't pick them up by the tail. But God was trying to teach him something. In other words, trust what I'm about to do. Trust, Moses, what I'm about to do with your little life, with what you think you have. Trust me. Pick it up by the tail. Trust me. This, so Moses reached out his hand and took the snake and it turned back into a staff in his hand. This, said the Lord, is so that they believe, that they may believe, that the Lord, the God of your, their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared to you. Exodus 4, 17. We'll skip down a little bit. Exodus 4, 17. But take this staff in your hand so that you can perform the signs with it. Now, before this happened, had anything phenomenal, any miraculous things ever happened with the staff? No, it was just something that he carried in the wilderness. It was just something that helped him walk, that he couldn't stumble. It was something he used with the sheep to herd the sheep. But in Exodus 4, 18 through 20, it says, Then then Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Let me return to my own people in Egypt to see if any of them are still alive. That's a crazy thing. God just told you to go there, and now you're asking him, now you're saying, I hope some some of them are still alive. If God has called you, there's going to be a lot of people there. Jethro said, go, and I wish you well. Now the Lord said, now the Lord had said to Moses and Midian, go back to Egypt for all those who wanted to kill you are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons, put them on a donkey, and started back to Egypt. And he took, what is it called now? The staff of God in his hands. When he gave it to God, this is what it was. But when he poured it into God's economy, and he poured it into God's provision, it became now the staff of God. And now with the staff of God, there's more than enough. There's more than enough. There's 12 baskets more, whatever it is. It's not just enough. It's more than enough. God asked Moses, what do you have? Give it to me. Let me use it, and I will supersize it. Now it's the staff of God. He supersizes whatever you have. You just have to step out in faith and give what you have. Jesus is speaking in Luke 38, 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. Not when you have enough, just give. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. See, so many of us think this, we see our measure as this big. And so we say, well, this is all we have. And if I pour this out, there's not much there. But I'm reminded of a story. Jesus was in the temple, and he was watching people put in their offerings and their tithe. And he watched a widow come up, and she put in two, two mites called the widow's mite. Those two mites were less, the value was less than a penny. And Jesus took that moment to teach his disciples. He said, do you see that woman? Yes, sir, we see her, we see her. Do you see what she just put in the offering? Yes, sir, we see it. She has put in more than all the others before or after. And the disciples said, Lord, she just put in two mites. Others have been putting in folding money, gold coins, and silver. And she said, yes. She gave out of her lack. The rest gave out of their quantity. They gave out. They had plenty. See, when you give all you have, he supersizes what you have. So many times we come to God and we say, Lord, this is all I have. And he says, just give it to me. But Lord, this isn't enough. He said, I I would not have asked you if I had thought. He never says to you, yeah, you're right. It's, It's not enough. He never says that. He says, give it to me and let me do something with it. When the measure is all I have, 
See, I'm giving all I have. When I give all I have, he gives all he has. And out of the storehouses of heaven, you want to read about the storehouses in heaven, read Job. When he was talking to Job and said, Job, do you realize who you're questioning here? And he talks about all the storehouses in heaven. There's always more than enough. There's the quantity upon quantity upon quantity. But when I give all I have out of his storehouses, he gives all he has. So many are waiting for God to give them something they think they don't have, when all along he is asking them to give away what they already have. We've been going on treasure hunts for a few months now. We didn't go this week, so I don't want you to come up and say, hey, why didn't you tell me? We didn't go this week because I know the kids are starting back to school, but we are going to go this Thursday night at 6. So Thursday night, 6, meet me in the rock. And um, I want you to be a part of it. We're doing treasure hunts, and some of you don't come because you say, this is my boldness, Lord. This is all the boldness I have. Michael, Pastor, Michael, this is all the boldness I have. But if you'll bring what little bit of boldness you have, you're like, Lord, I can't walk up to a stranger and talk to them. I can't walk up to a stranger and pray for them. Do you have this much boldness? I'm sure you do. If you've ever interviewed for a job, you talk to a total stranger, okay? So you've done it before. But if you'll bring your boldness, what little it is, and pour it into his economy, he will increase your boldness. Let me tell you what I've seen in our youth group since we started this. I've seen some of our youth were very, very timid, become very, very bold. Why? Because they gave what they had, and God supersized it. We're going on treasure hunts. You may say, Lord, I don't have a lot of word in me. This is all the word I have. Well, bring it. Do you have a testimony? This is my little testimony. Bring it. And watch him supersize it. Lord, I don't have enough time. I don't have time to go on a treasure hunt. I don't have enough time to whatever. What time do you have? I have this much time. Bring it. And watch him supersize it. Jesus told his disciples, you feed them. Lord, all we have is five loaves and two fish. Then bring it to me. Give away what you have and watch God supersize it. God's dream for your life is much bigger than your own. He's going to take you further than you're expecting, open doors that you could have never opened, and give you more influence than you thought possible. Luke 6.38. What do you have? 638. Very short, but it says so much. What do you have? Give and it will be given to you. Not when you have enough. Give what you have. For with the measure you use, all I have, it will be measured to you. Be would stand with me. Would you make a commitment today with me? that from now on you give what you have. Would you make that commitment? Between you and the Lord today, say, Lord, I heard what this pastor said to me, and all my life this is what I saw, I've seen myself as. This is my faith. This is what I believe. I don't think I have enough boldness. I don't think I have enough word. I don't think whatever it is. Would you make a commitment to bring it to the Lord? And pour it into his economy, into his provision, and let him supersize it. Would you do that? Would you make that commitment today? Lord, I'll give you what I have. So, Father, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we sell, our, we sell our, ourselves short so many times, Lord. We don't think we have enough or somebody has more. 
And so let's let, let, let's let them do it. But Father, you said, bring what you have. You feed them. You minister. You cast out devils. You raise the dead. You heal the sick. So when I come to someone who's lame, I say, what I have, I give you. I pour what I have into his economy, and in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. I say to the dead casket, the dead in the casket and the coffin, what I have, I give. In the name of Jesus, rise. I place my, my little bit of whatever, what all I have, into his economy. Father, I make a commitment today to bring what I have, to never make excuses anymore. I don't have enough time. I don't have enough boldness. I don't have enough word. I don't have enough testimony. No more excuses, Lord, because everybody has this much. So we bring it to you. Now, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity. You came today, and you think, I just don't know if I have any hope. I don't know if I can make it through tomorrow or next week. I'd love to pray with you. I'd like for the prayer team to come up. If you've been dealing with whatever, if you need Jesus in your heart, Jesus in your life, then come and make a commitment to him. Make a commitment today to him. If you're dealing with anything in your body, if you need healing, any, any infirmity in your life, if you need healing, physical healing, emotional healing, mental, whatever it is, come and be a part of, of this ministry team. Come up here and get prayed for. If you need a new job, if it bothers you, bring it to the Lord. If it's something that you've been dealing with, and you're continuing to deal with it, come and be a part of this team up here. Come, up, come and let them minister to you. Let them lay hands on you. Let them agree with you on whatever it is that you're dealing with. The Bible says if two agree, two or three agree on touching anything, let them agree with you on whatever it is that's going on in your life.
Thank you for being here today. Ladies, maybe many of you have a sewing box at home and you have some thimbles in there. I ask you to take one of them out and put it on your dresser, put it where you can see it. And when you don't feel like you're adequate or you don't feel like you have enough, remember this message. I was going to buy everybody a thimble today until I went the Hobby Lobby and I saw how much they are. Yeah. Thought they were like 10 cents. This was like two and a half dollars. So I thought, I don't know if I'll buy everybody a thimble. But get one, even if it's a plastic one, and put it somewhere. And when you're struggling and you don't think you're adequate enough, take this and put this in your hand and say, Lord, I give you what I have. Father, supersize what I have. This is all I have. This is all I bring, Lord. Supersize it. You'll pray with me. Father, I thank you for this day. Father, I thank you for the simplicity of this message. Father, the simplicity of faith. Your disciples said, Father, increase our faith. faith. And you said, if you just have the faith of a mustard seed, Bring it to me and I'll supersize it. I thank you, Lord, that in your economy and in your provision, there is ample and more than, more than enough in every area of our life. Father, let us trust you and have faith in you. Father, that signs and wonder, wonders and miracles will follow those that believe. Father, we believe. Father, I ask you to bless each one as they go out today. Bless, their, bless them as they work. Bless them this week, the fruit of their hands. Father, I ask you protection upon their families, and marriages, and children. Until we meet again, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, if you'd like to go on a treasure hunt this Thursday night at 6. Also, prayer tomorrow night in the conference room at 6.